we're going to take a deeper dive into how we configure backgrounds in different lands. We'll talk about background colors and images, all the advanced options regarding positioning and fixed parallax scrolling. We'll talk linear and radial gradients and overlays, how we can use them to increase that legibility, increase contrast with the click of a button. And then four more clicks of a button. Also, we'll cover background videos, but first, let's start with background colors. To set a background color, set a background color. But here's the thing, there's something really useful here. There are times when we want our background colors to be consistent throughout the project. This is where the body all pages tag comes in handy. If we select it from the dropdown, we can make style changes that'll be the new defaults for almost anything throughout the project. We can make changes, not just to background color, we can always go back in and change this later, but we can make complementary changes too, because with a darker background and darker text, we risk mass confusion and potentially panic. I, I, I literally just bought, I put my credit card and I think they stole my, ah, uh, it, it's just low contrast. As we already know, contrast is the measurement of the difference between two things. Low contrast, not so legible. High contrast, that's much better. Extreme color clashing. Hey, what's that sound? Ah, oh, my eyes. No, no, it's Mariana, she's frying bacon. That's background colors. What about background images? Well, this is where layering gets really interesting. Regardless of whether you have a background color set already, you can add an image. By default, when we go to choose an image, whether it's something we've already added to our assets, or if it's something we're adding to our project here in real time, by default, it's going to look a bit tiled. That's because the default is set to tile. 2x takes the image's default dimensions and cuts them in half. Cuts the width in half, cuts the height in half. Sometimes this is the way to go, but usually for background images, it's color, cut, clarity. You know what? These are our notes from our lesson on diamonds. For backgrounds, it's custom, cover, and contain. Custom lets you specify an exact pixel value. This is usually practical for tiled images. You can put a percentage in, so the background ends up scaling. This is now 120% of the width of the element. And we can always position these things too. We can affect where the image is anchored. Cover scales the image proportionally. You can still affect positioning, but notice how the image will always cover the element. And that's different from contain. In contain, the image is scaled, but nothing gets clipped or cropped off, the full image is contained inside the element. And for this one, let's switch back to cover. And before we move on, let's show fixed. And fixed backgrounds we set to cover, they work like this. The background image is now covering the entire viewport. And that means it's scaled up regardless of the size of the selected element. But here's what happens to any element with a fixed background. It becomes a window. And however our element is sized or wherever it's positioned, it's now serving as a window through which we can see our background. And here's why this is so powerful. Suppose we have three sections, each with a background image set to fixed. While the top section is in view, we can see our background image. But here's where it gets interesting. When we scroll to the second section, we're now seeing its background image fixed to the viewport. Same thing with the third section. And we can do this with text too. Suppose we have different headings here and each of them have different text fills set to background. If we have background images and those images are set to cover, making those backgrounds fixed means we have a knockout text effect that turns the headings themselves into a visual effect that still respects scroll, but fixes the background to the viewport. So that's background images. Let's go over linear gradients. By default, adding a gradient shows us two stops. Of course, we can double click on a stop change its color to whatever we want, and as expected, we can do the same with our second stop. At any time, we can click on the gradient to add additional stops, and we can click and drag to move our stops around. To delete a stop, just click and drag out of the gradient. Now, what if we have a background image? Well, we can just stack a gradient on top of it. And if we affect that color, if we go into our stops and affect that color and its opacity, we can see right through the gradient. We can see our background image right underneath. And what about repeat? Well, if we turn on repeat in this example, it looks exactly the same. And there's a reason for that. Repeating needs space outside your stops. So if we move our stops around and create space on the outside, our gradient will now repeat evenly as many times as it can within the extra space outside of the range of your stops. 
that's linear gradients. What about radial gradients? Well, let's clear up something. The word is gradate, not gradiate. As in, radial gradients start from the center color and they gradate outward. And two things to cover regarding how radial gradients work. The first is this. The center color, the color at the center of the radial gradient, it's the one we see in our gradient preview to the left. And second, the second thing, we can move the position of the focal point, the starting point, where we want the gradient to radiate from. Now, everyone's thinking the same two things. One, that sentence ended with a preposition. And two, none of it explains what the radius presets are. A gradient's span, that's the distance between the starting point and where the gradient ends, that whole thing is controlled by some tiny buttons which do different things. This would be a terrible time to end this lesson. Imagine if it just cut to blood. By default, we have farthest corner, and as we adjust our focal point, the gradient will continue gradating outward until it hits the farther corner. That one makes sense. Farthest side goes until it hits the farthest side. Closest corner stops gradating when it hits the closest corner. Closest side? You get the idea. That's radial gradients. Overlays are really straightforward, but a great way to differentiate a background that usually has an image. And if the text is hard to read, low contrast here, choosing overlay adds an overlay. It stacks as another layer in our backgrounds. We can go in, we can change the color to whatever we want, and we can control the opacity by controlling the opacity. That's an overlay. Finally, we have background videos. This one's a bit different, but it's helpful to think of a background video like you'd think of a section. That is, you can drag one right into your body element and immediately upload a video you want to set as the background. And it'll transcode. You can close this out while it's transcoding and treat the background video like it's just any other section. In fact, we can transplant this container, complete with all the elements inside, we can put the whole thing right inside the background video. And when we preview, it looks pretty good. But what about that contrast? Well, a couple options here. We could use a gradient or an overlay to stack on top of the background video. This will give us better contrast between the background and the foreground. Now, Background videos have different experiences. There are different expectations for how they'll play on different devices. So check out the full documentation on background videos over at Webflow University so you can really anticipate how the video is going to function. But that's it. A lot to consider here. We can set a background color by setting the background color. We can add images to our backgrounds, which we can configure however we want. We can add linear gradients. We can add radial gradients. We can add overlays to help increase the contrast between the foreground and background. And we can add a background video, which we've somewhat confusingly chosen to demonstrate using this very lesson, right before closing the window entirely, leaving us with one final action, making Miguel's desktop tolerable, using stacks in macOS.